four quick easy steps to get you started with an Amazon FBA business right away. Because if you're an Amazon seller, it means that you are selling everyday products like this portable neck fan and you're earning a passive source of income working from home. And in this video, I'm going to show you all of the strategies and what mistakes to avoid when starting an Amazon FBA business. So do make sure you stay all the way until the end. Hey guys, Dave here. I am a multiple six-figure Amazon seller. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you my personal strategies that I use to be successful with this business and the strategies that I share with my one-on-one -on -one coaching students who have helped create a successful Amazon business. So do make sure you stay all the way until the end so you don't miss the most popular mistakes that new Amazon sellers makes that cost them thousands of dollars. And if you're new to this channel, make sure that you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever I upload new videos that have to do with e-commerce and making money online. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, guys. Now, before we go and talk about step number one, I want you guys to understand this. Amazon has millions of products out there, but it does not mean that you can sell any product that you see online. You need to learn to do what's called product research. Now, what does that mean? Well, you need to look for products that are making pretty good money on Amazon, but that have low competition. Now, what does competition mean when it comes to Amazon? Well, it equals reviews. What does that mean? You want to look for products that your competitors have an average low review count. Because remember, whenever you first list your product on Amazon, you're going to start out with zero. And if you're competing with people that have thousands, well, it's going to be really hard for you to compete with them. I mean, let's do a quick thinking exercise here, right? Let's think about last time you went to Amazon, right? You search for a product. You probably saw a competitor. Maybe let's say you see a competitor that has 5,000 reviews. And then you see another one that's selling the same product, but they only have five reviews. Which one would you buy? obviously the one that has more reviews. This is why it's essential for you to learn to work with what's called product research tools, a product research software that, are, that is gonna allow you to find these products with a low review count, but that are making pretty good revenue. The one that I have developed um, for, for all my students and for you guys watching this video is called Overlook Pro. Overlook Pro is a product research tool that's gonna make this things go a lot faster. But anyways, Enough of the talking, let's go right into the computer. All right, guys, so now we're here on Overlook Pro. Let me show you what the home looks like. And for all you guys watching, you can create an account. Just go to overlookpro.com. <coughs> and uh, you can simply just create an account with the software. It's super simple, uh, it's free. And if you do want to get uh, the subscription for it, just by watching this video, guys, um, you can get 25% off on the monthly subscription by entering this code ecomdave 25 and you will get 25% off on your subscription with Overlook Pro. All right, guys, now let's go into the tool. Now, before we go and start doing product research, I want you guys to all download Google Chrome. Google Chrome, it's a web browser. If you don't have it, just simply go to Google, type in download Google Chrome and you can get this browser. Make sure you open up the browser before you go to Overlook. Open up the browser, go to overlookpro.com and I want you to go to this part right here that says product scanner. So we're gonna go ahead and install the Overlook Pro Chrome extension. We're gonna use this tool um, so we can so we can see how much money our competitors are making, what is the search volume for keywords and all that. Don't worry, I'm gonna explain all that to you here shortly. So we're gonna come here, you wanna click on install now and yours is going to say add to Chrome. Mine says remove from Chrome because I already have this tool, but yours will say add to Chrome. You'll hit that and you'll see this little owl head come up. If it doesn't come up on this section, just hit on the little puzzle piece and then you can pin it so it shows up on the top of your Chrome extension section. All right, so again, perfect. Once you have that up there, we're gonna go ahead and exit out of this. And let me just show you how the tool works, right? So you can, once you have the tool installed, just go to amazon.com and I want you to search any product that you can think of, like any product. So for example, we're going to look for neck pillows, right? Um, if I'm wondering, hey, I wonder how much money the sellers selling neck pillows on Amazon are making. 
you can just go ahead, search the keyword, you wanna hit the tool, and it's gonna show you in detail how much money those particular sellers that we just saw on Amazon are making. Here, just so you can have some visuals, it automatically organizes it just how the search results are. So if you see here, one, two, three, four, right? The organic, it doesn't count the sponsor. These are sponsor listings. I'll talk about what that means also here at the end of the video. Um, so as you can see, one, two, three, four, if I hit this, it will show me just how you see it right there, right? Those were exact listings that we just saw on Amazon. And as you can see, this particular seller is doing about $166,000 of monthly revenue selling this particular neck pillow. He's selling an uh, estimated of 15,000 units every month right so this tool is pretty cool you can see how much money your competitors are making before you even launch the product right so you can start doing some market analysis um so don't worry i will show you guys what else what things to look for here on the tool shortly i just wanted you to understand why this tool is important now let's go back to overlook guys and we're going to use a second tool called eagle eye research okay now what is eagle eye research i just want you to think of this as a huge filter that's going to filter out products on Amazon all based on your filter, which means you're going to find products on Amazon a lot faster, right? So you wanna go ahead, you wanna click on keywords. I always like using that section because it shows the market as a whole, not just one product. Now, uh, we want to look for products on home and kitchen, for example, for today. And I want to look for products in baby category and in office, right? Just on these three categories I want to look for just for today. And then I can also tell this tool, hey, I, only, I wanna see products in this particular categories that are making, let's say, at least $8,000 a month, right? And here's the cool part. You can do a max review count, right? So I wanna sell products that are making at least $8,000 a month, but I don't want them to have more than 300 reviews because they've told me that, <laughs> that it's a bad idea to compete with uh, other sellers that have thousands, right? So. 8,000 means it's making, that's how many sales we want the products to be making every month and that have less than 300 reviews. We're gonna go ahead and hit the search and it's gonna give us a big list of products that fit with our product research criteria, right? Pretty cool, right? We have one called table numbers. So we'll see what that looks like. You wanna go ahead and hit view on Amazon, right? Boom, um, let's, we, can, we can pull up a, a couple other ones. We have a time clock. Time clocks for small business, pretty cool. All right, <clears throat> now a couple of things. Um, I don't like selling electronics personally. They just, it's just, they're just a big headache. You get a lot of refunds. Sometimes they're right broken. The suppliers don't do a good job of making them. So I'll go ahead and skip that one, right? So that's something also to remember. You don't wanna sell products that are breakable. Um, no electronics, me personally. You wanna sell simple products. Maybe like this, you know, table numbers, right? <laughs> they're not breakable, they're small. You want them to be light. As well so this looks pretty good uh let's pull up one more so let's see here yo-yo stroller <laughs> let's see is that a whole stroller yeah they're too big right usually guys you want to sell products that fit inside a backpack or a shoebox and that weigh less than three pounds all right so let's go ahead and come over here um beer tabs beer tabs could be good cool they're small right uh they're not breakable uh, I like it, right? So we have two products. We have table numbers and beer tabs. And this is why I love this product research tools because you would have never really thought of selling beer tabs, right? People have come into Amazon thinking that, oh, I'm going to think of the product. You want to make it easy on yourself? Go just pick products based on the numbers, right? Pick products based on sales, pick products based on competition and how you're going to differentiate, right? So that is step number one, guys. You want to learn to do product research, find products high demand, but low competition. Okay, guys, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna run the tool on our table numbers niche and in our beer tab niche, and we're gonna take a deeper look into these two products. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start with table numbers, right? Right away, I can see that the average monthly revenue for this product is about 18,000. That means that the average seller on page one of Amazon, right, is doing about $18,000 in revenue and they're selling an average of 965 pieces every month. But what I love about this, right? I always wanna go ahead, I wanna start looking at reviews versus monthly revenue. I can see that a lot of sellers here, right? Have, are making pretty good money uh, sell, uh, with low reviews. This guy has five reviews 
and he is doing $13,000 a month with only five reviews. I actually do love that, love that a lot. Um, and yeah, so right away, guys, I can see, you know, I'm comparing reviews, I'm comparing revenue, and I see a big part of sellers with low reviews making pretty good money. Why does that tell me? That's a good indicator of a safe product to get into. And if I'm looking at the product itself, it's made out of paper, right? Most of them are plastic, easy, it's small, it's light. I love it. Let's look at the second product. Wow, look at this one, beer taps, right? The average, the average monthly revenue is 16,000. Um, you have someone here with 54 reviews doing 12, 33 reviews doing 3,800, right? <laughs> and the reviews are getting a bit high, right? You don't see that many sellers with two digit reviews here. So that might be a problem, but it's still a quite low. Now, guys, I want you to understand this as well. And this has to do a lot with product research is you need, you have to know how to differentiate yourself and how to add value. Because if I want to go ahead and start selling the same thing this person is selling, I cannot sell the exact same thing because you're not really giving the customer a reason to purchase from you. You want to bring more value. So then you have to do a little bit of, uh, you have to do a little bit of research and know your target customer and see what else they would like with this beer tab, right? Now, in my coaching program, there are multiple ways that we teach our students on how to differentiate their products and how to add more value. So when they list that product on Amazon, it beats the competition, right? Same thing with table numbers. If I was going to sell this particular product, I would maybe change the font or maybe make it rose gold, something different. So when the customer sees my listing competing with this one, you give them a reason to purchase from you. You can also do more quantity. Maybe you could include the little, uh, the, the little holder for the table number, for example, or just a little bundle, just a little extra to differentiate you from the rest. I want you guys to think about it. Okay. Now guys, uh, part number two of um, being a successful Amazon seller is not only finding a good product, right? It's about finding a good supplier that's going to make you a good quality product and um, that is, you know, <laughs> and that is going to give it to you at a good price. So you can compete also on, you know, so you can have really good margins. Um, so in order to find a supplier, we're going to go to Alibaba.com. If you, all of you guys who are new to this, if you don't know what Alibaba is, Alibaba is like Amazon, but instead of selling you products, they're connecting you with manufacturers in China or in India, right? Um, they're the biggest at this, right? And you can, they'll, they'll help you find a supplier uh, for pretty much anything. So. I want to go ahead and start looking for suppliers for this. Now, usually what I want to do is I want to switch this to manufacturers, right? So it only shows me all of the different manufacturers. I don't want to look on products because they, they might show one manufacturer that, that, that does multiple products. You don't want that. I want to see all of the different manufacturers, all of the suppliers that make this product, right? So that I can contact, I can contact multiple and then I can you know, negotiate on price with multiple people and see which one is giving me the best price option, right? So I wanna go ahead, I wanna go ahead and hit table numbers, okay? And I'm going to search for all of the different manufacturers as you can see right here. Now, before I even start going through the manufacturers that make this product, I wanna go ahead and I wanna hit where it says supplier types. You wanna hit trade assurance. You only wanna work with suppliers that do trade assurance. Now, why is that? Well, this is a form of payment that Alibaba offers, right? So whenever you're actually paying the supplier, you're not really paying them, you're paying Alibaba. Alibaba holds the money until your, until your products arrive at the Amazon warehouse, okay? So again, that gives you some sort of payment protection. So again, you only wanna work with suppliers that do trade assurance. Next thing, I wanna work with suppliers that have been with Alibaba for at least three years. For example, this guy has been with Alibaba for two years. I don't like it. I want some more history with the company. So this guy looks good. This guy looks good. This guy looks good, right? So again, that is part two. You want to make sure that you're contacting suppliers that have been with the company for a long time and that, you know, that, that are trustworthy, right? Now, next thing, once you find a supplier that you want to go ahead and contact, say, maybe you want to do this style of number, right? From, we can see here, they're selling the MOQ, the one through 20 that we saw right here on Amazon. <clears throat> they're selling them for $5 <clears throat> and they're selling for eight, eight, $18.99. So practically $19 on Amazon for that particular style, right? For the set from one to 20. So pretty interesting. 
I mean, I see that they've been with Alibaba for three years. They're, they're the trade assurance. I want to go ahead. I want to contact them, right? Now, what this is going to do is this is going to open up a um, you know a chat with a agent that works for this particular company. Now, what you want to do is you want to contact them and you want to ne start negotiating with them because unlike Amazon, the price that you see right here is not the cheapest that you can get it for. There are ways on how you can negotiate with the supplier so you can get it for cheaper, right? Um, now, on my, on my coaching program, we actually give you a template that I personally use to help me reach out to suppliers and help me negotiate with them. There are different strategies that you can do to help you bring that initial cost down from your supplier. Um, and that's something that we provide to our students. Also to all of our coaching students, you have access to working with a sourcing agent as well that works with my company. That's somebody that's working in China. They have experience with working with suppliers. And a lot of the times they can get you a, a lot cheaper product than what you can see on Alibaba. Uh, but again, if you don't have a sourcing agent, Alibaba is completely fine. You can communicate, you can negotiate with your suppliers. So say for example, I want to go ahead. I want to do this style of table numbers. I want to. I want to go ahead. Contact them. I will contact them. I will ask them how much is going to be for manufacturing. Say, for example, 100 to 300 sets of those of those one through 20 um, wood products. Um, and then I will ask them to get me some quotes. Right now, again, there you, you, sh you should be asking for the quote for manufacturing these products and for shipping these products as well. Okay, so you can get the shipping cost. If you don't know where you're going to send them yet because you don't have an Amazon warehouse, you don't have, you haven't created a listing, you can just give them your address. You can get an estimate of around how much you're going to pay. Okay. Um, so again, um, you want to contact them. You want to, you know, you want to get some quotes back. Okay. Now, step number three um, is you have to learn how to calculate what you're going to make selling this particular product. So let's say you wanted to sell these table numbers right here. You want to sell this style. So you, it's important that you click on the, on the style of product that you want to sell. So when I go ahead, I'm clicking on that one. I'm going to go ahead and grab this little number that you see right here. That is called an ASIN, A-S-I-N, okay? So I want to go ahead. I want to copy that number. I want to open up a new tab and we're going to go to what's called an Amazon FBA calculator. So you want to go to Google and you wanna type in Amazon FBA calculator. You want to click on, the, on that, and then you wanna to go to continue as guest. You want to what, you want to click where it says in search Amazon catalog, and you wanna paste that piece in right here, and then you wanna click on search. From what you can see here, it automatically pulls up that particular listing. It shows you their size um, and their weight and so on. So it looks like this product fits inside a backpack or a shoebox, and it weighs less than a pound. Now, before you even contact the supplier, you can get an idea on how much you're going to pay for shipping. If the product fits inside a backpack or a shoebox and it weighs less than a pound and a half, you're going to be spending about $1.50 on if you ship it via sea shipping or if you ship it via air shipping, you're going to be paying around $3.50 um, for that particular product. Okay, if the product is bigger than a backpack or a shoebox and it weighs a lot, then you, you need to contact the supplier so you can get an idea on how much you're going to pay for shipping the product from China to the Amazon warehouse. Now in this, when you want to do the calculations on Amazon fulfillment, remember Amazon is going to be taking care of many of storing your products and shipping them to the customers. So you want to do Amazon fulfillment. Your fulfillment side is if, if you were fulfilling the orders from your house, we're going to go ahead and do Amazon fulfillment. Now, uh, the part that you're going to fill in is the cost of goods sold. You see that right there? So we can see now, let's say we heard back from our suppliers and we're paying about $5 per piece to manufacture and it's costing us, let's say $1.50 because we're going to ship it via C to ship the product. So our total cost will be $6.50 for cost of goods sold, right? You're adding up the manufacturing price and the shipping price together, which leaves you with a profit of about $3.53 per piece at an 18% margin. I usually want to make a little more right now. Now I know now the beautiful thing about this is that you're calculating your, 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 um, your profits, right? So then you can go back to the supplier and you can do some more negotiating. I usually want a 30% margin on, on my, <clears throat> on, on my products. And I want to make at least a $5 profit per piece. But right now with just not negotiating, this looks pretty good, <laughs> right? 353. So this might be worth looking into, guys. So remember that is step three, is making sure that you're calculating your profits and that you're knowing your numbers. 
Okay, guys, now the final part of, um, of you know, being successful on Amazon is you wanna make sure that you have created a great listing and this is what we can, we can have another video on this, guys. Um, by the way, if you want me to create, you know, a more in detail video on how to create the best listing for Amazon, that it's search engine optimized, great images and all that, I want you guys to comment the word Amazon FBA below and I'll make more videos just like this. If we get at least 50 comments, I'll even give you guys my template that I use to help me contact suppliers um, and negotiate with them. How about that? All right, guys, but we have to get 50. I will check on this. So then again, um, what you guys want to do is once you have a listing created and let's say you already shipped your products from your supplier at the Amazon warehouse, they're at the Amazon warehouse and they're ready to sell. You want to make sure that you're learning how to rank your products on page one of Amazon. Now, why is this important? 90% of sales happen in this area. And if you're not on page one, then you might as well not be on Amazon at all. So you may be asking yourself, okay, how do I rank my products on, on how do I rank my products on, on page one, right? Well, you have to do what's called a sponsored listing, a sponsored post, a pay-per-click, right? A pay-per-click ad, what you see right here. For example, this particular seller that we see right here, he is running a PPC ad. You can see this is his ad and this is his organic listing. Now, in order for you to get organically ranked on page one, and by organic, I mean, you see it's just organically there. He's not paying to be, you see, he's just right here. Um, in order to get here, you have to first run ads and you have to generate sales from your ad. So when people see your ad and they buy from you, right? Usually after a few consecutive uh, days of getting sales from your ad, the algorithm of Amazon is going to notice this and they're going to put you on page one organically. Once that happens, then you can optimize your ad spend and then you'll be on page one for as long as people keep buying your product. This is why it's important to differentiate your product and add value. So when people see your product, they buy from you instead of the competition, right? So that's it, guys. I hope that you understand. I hope that you took a lot of notes and, um, you know, I hope that you got as much information as possible. And again, if you really love what you saw in this video and you love all the information, then what I want you to do is make sure you smash the like button and subscribe and make sure that you comment the word Amazon FBA below. So that lets me know that you want more videos just like this. All right, guys. Now, also, I've left a quick treat for you guys. I've left a free mini course for you guys to go ahead and watch right in the description of this video that will give you more information on each of the steps that I just showed you. All right, guys. So again, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, and I will see you guys on the next one.